The SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket sits atop launch pad 39A, poised to lift the Crew Dragon spacecraft and its precious cargo, two men, on their seminal journey to the International Space Station. This is it, counting down to a moment some nine years in the making. Lift off. It was 2011 when the last U.S. astronauts left the Earth on a U.S.-built spaceship, the shuttle Atlantis. Now, NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley are about to taste history, flying in a commercially built vehicle no one has flown in before. They landed at the Kennedy Space Center last week for final preparations, including the obligatory landing strip press conference. Uh, both Doug and I are really excited to be here. This is a, an awesome time to be an astronaut with a, a new spacecraft to get a chance to go and fly. Think of it this way. In 1981, John Young and Bob Crippen flew the shuttle Columbia on a test flight. That was 39 years ago. And that was the last time astronauts flew a freshly minted, newly designed spaceship from U.S. soil. Like Young and Crippen, Behnken and Hurley flew space shuttles too, albeit decades after Columbia's maiden voyage. Like Young and Crippen, Behnken and Hurley were military test pilots. And this is a test flight with all the risks that come with space flight. Right now, we are trying to identify any risks that we know of that's out there and continue to look at risks and buy them down. But we also can't fool ourselves. You know, human spaceflight is really, really tough. This past weekend, to make it as smooth as possible before they fly, the astronauts went through a launch day dry run. Dressed in their spacesuits, Hurley and Behnken exited the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building, posed for pictures and got into the specially designed Tesla SUV for the 20 minute ride to the launch pad, walked across the access arm to the Crew Dragon spacecraft. All of this done with social distancing protocols in place. The astronauts say they have been tested a couple times for coronavirus, but added the extra medical attention is not a big deal. And it seems like every year the scrutiny gets greater. Uh, so from that perspective, I think it's, uh, it's been relatively normal, uh, comparatively speaking. And, and we just, I think, uh, after all these years, are just kind of used to the poking and prodding and blood draws and, and all the other things that come along with uh, flying into space. One of the other things that goes along with flying in space is the weather. And with Crew Dragon's advanced abort capabilities, the weather has to be acceptable, not only at the launch site, but up the East Coast, and believe it or not, across the Atlantic. We're monitoring weather uh, all the way along the ascent track, which means from, from, the, from here in Florida, all the way up the eastern seaboard of, the, of North America, United States and Canada, and all the way over basically to Ireland across the northern Atlantic. We're monitoring that weather, um, and along that way we're monitoring a lot of the same things. We're looking at winds, we're looking at lightning, we're looking at precipitation, we're actually looking at waves. We're looking at wave velocity and wave height. Once in orbit and on their way to the station, Hurley and Behnken will put the spacecraft through its paces to test out its capabilities. Then, about 19 hours after liftoff, they will rendezvous with station. And by then, we won't likely be calling it Crew Dragon. Have you guys named your Crew Dragon? We have. <laughs> We, okay, we have to save some suspense for the mission itself, but uh, we, we do have a name and we will uh, break it out appropriately and, and we'll, uh, we've got something for you to look forward to on launch day. So Crew Dragon will get its name just like Mercury, Gemini, Apollo and shuttle spacecraft before it all had their names. It makes it kind of personal, not just for the astronauts, but for all of us. For My Radar, I'm John Zarella. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.